I'm fishing for catfish. Everything else is just bait. Catfished by a beard. Hello, Reddit. I'm new here, and I've never posted a story before. But listening to other stories has inspired me to share my misadventures dealing with a beard of my very own. Oh, lucky you. <laughs> I hope someone out there will benefit from this and maybe be able to see the red flags that I so obviously missed. It's taken me three years to finally be able to open up about this publicly. I suffer a sheer amount of embarrassment and anxiety to even repeat the atrocities that have unfolded. There is a slight spoiler alert here as well. The story will contain some mature content and scenarios later on down the line that might be triggering for survivors of different types of abuse. So, fair warning. With that out of the way, I hold my breath and dive on into the worst two-year span of my life. Diving for catfish, right? No, not really. Nobody does. <laughs> for the past 14 years, I've been using my skills as a digital artist in a virtual universe, much like textures one would design for, say, a character in a video game. I design custom skins, clothing, jewelry, furniture, rooms, or even original pieces of artwork for people's display pictures or posters, things people can buy from my shop and then equip onto their in-game avatars or commission from me directly. Sounds like a sweet gig, honestly. If I had any artistic talent, let me tell you. <laughs> well, with that many years of experience, I've actually made quite a name for myself as what they call a pro developer on the platform. I even get paid real money for every piece of my art that sells. It's super fun and very rewarding. I mean, I'd like to know what the split is on that. But if you enjoy the game, if you can make some extra scratch while also keeping it alive, yeah. I think this is a win-win, all things considered. As a severe introvert and sufferer of social anxiety, this is also a great way for me to connect with people from all over the world from the safety of my own home. God, I feel that so much. <laughs> it's exactly what this YouTube channel is. I've made a lot of longtime friends along the way. Unfortunately, this is also how I inevitably got thrown into the mix with the most manipulative person I have ever had the misfortune of meeting. I will call him Wea Beard. I'm surprised that hasn't been used as a beard name before, honestly. At least not to my knowledge. In this virtual world, there are many ways to interact with your friends. One of them being countless chat rooms that you could enter and either sit or stand in. You can't walk around or fly like you can in another popular virtual world. I was pinged by a fangirl of mine, and as I was doing nothing more than playing through Oracle of Ages for the umpteenth time, I did accept that chat request, and was promptly transported into one of these chat rooms. As I've grown accustomed to, regrettably, she dragged me in to show me off to the other patrons of the chat room. Oh my god, could you make this any more awkward? <laughs> I don't like this at all. Fangirl says, Mute! Hi! I want you to meet my friend! She typed almost as soon as I loaded into the room. I grimaced behind the safety of my computer screen, thankful that nobody could see the actual depths of awkwardness that this sort of thing always brings me. And I just put on my most cheerful front. OP. Oh. Hey, fangirl. How's it going? Hi. I sucked in a breath and blew it out as I dragged my mouse cursor over the screen, panning around the small, dimly lit room and zooming in on the other avatars that occupied the space reflected back to me on my monitor. A few people with male avatars, nobody really remarkably stood out to me, certainly nobody I had met before. My attention started to drift back to my game when a private message plopped into view in the chat box. It was Weabeard. Hey. I'm actually, like, a huge fan of your work. I just never had the nerve to talk to you before. Sorry she dragged you in here like this. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it wasn't at your behest at all. <laughs> as flattering as it might seem to be complimented all the time, let me tell you, it gets awkward real fast. Especially when you're dragged into a room full of strangers and put on display like some kind of showpiece to be oogled and ogled over. 
Honestly, I feel this so hard. Even in my own Discord VC, people are like, holy god, it's Red X! It's like, dude, just, just say hello. <laughs> Please, like, I'm a normal dude, okay? I do the silly voices, I read the silly stories, I got a really silly job, <laughs> but I'm a normal dude. Maybe slightly silly sometimes. Although I was super nervous about being made the center of attention, I tried to remain polite and thankful. I sent Weabeard a smile emoji and thanked him for his support, telling him to not feel shy around me because, yeah, I'm just a person after all. It never works. <laughs> Quite literally a nobody outside of this virtual world. He argued with me on that matter, stating, I disagree. You have a lot of talent. I wish I could create like you can, but I suck at art. So, uh, what are you up to, winky face? Oh, we learned from the Adelaide saga, didn't we? Never trust the winky face. <laughs> I blinked at my screen, taking in the winky face before my eyes and tilting my head slightly. Was this guy flirting with me? No, I decided. He's he's just being friendly, right? <laughs> Not right. <laughs> Always be suspicious. Why does he want to get close to you? Besides, I really had no reason to believe that he was a creep or anything. At least, not yet. Nah, man, benefit of the doubt is not a thing <laughs> that exists for me anymore, okay? Prove that you're not a creep, and then I'll open the gate. How about that? But yeah, I told him that I was just playing Oracle of Ages, and what ensued was a three-hour-long conversation about Zelda. I am a super mega fan of Zelda. You get me started, I will not shut up about it. He was seemingly just as big a fan as I was, and so the conversation took off, without a hitch. We stayed up late into the night, chatting about a great many things besides Zelda, of course. Both of us sharing our own likes and dislikes with different music and games, YouTube videos, movies, etc. The rest of the room forgotten, as we dissolved into our own little world off in the corner. I mean, okay, it seems wholesome enough. At least he was able to hold it together for three hours. I might be tricked into thinking that he's normal too. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the bottom to fall out. Little did I know that this was all just a ploy to get me closer to him, tangled into his web of deceit and lies, and I fell for it. Hook, line, and sinker. Well, my fingers hurt, so I'm gonna end this here for now. Again, I'm new to this, so be gentle with your criticism, lol. <laughs> Thank you all for giving me the time out of your day to read this. I'll try to post more when I can. Mute. Well, it seems like things are just starting to heat up, but I can definitely see the signs already. Although maybe hindsight is just 2020. By the way, best Legend of Zelda game? The Wind Waker. Don't, don't challenge me on this, alright? <laughs> we'll move on to part two. Here. <laughs> Yeah, thanks! <laughs> you can't change titles on Reddit. One of the great weaknesses of the platform. And it's it's funny to me sometimes. <laughs> Welcome back, for those of you that I haven't bored to death already. If you haven't read the first part to my story, I highly suggest you click here. It's in this video, so don't worry about that. In my last introduction, I mentioned being inspired to share my story with you all after hearing so many others. You see, I work graveyard shift, 4 p.m. to 3 a.m., cleaning dusty, dark, decrepit old buildings. I work alone. As you can imagine, this kind of environment can be spooky at times, so what better excuse to pop on some headphones and drown out those terrifying noises with some good old-fashioned Reddit stories. Classic! I highly encourage this! <laughs> My favorite source for this is Red X. Hey! And the plug! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> that makes me real happy, thank you. It's hard to feel spooked when you're laughing your ass off. Proven science, totally, go look it up, it's just a fact. <clears throat> if you're tired of hearing some robotic, monotonous voice reading Reddit stories, and you prefer an actual human with a debatably great sense of humor, <laughs> I highly suggest checking him out over here. And now let's dive right back into the Wea Beard Saga. God, you got me with the plug and everything? You're making me tear up. Oh, thanks so much. <laughs> Weirbeard and I began to spend more and more time getting to know each other in the weeks to follow. 
both of us having similar interests, gaming, horror movies, anime, it really helped to keep the fire blazing between us. To my knowledge, he seemed like a sweet, funny, all-around great guy to be around, though he was much more heavily into anime than I was, thus the nickname. His real username was something a bit weeaboo-ish too, if I'm really honest. Imagine something like Naruto Kichigo Wolf. Yeah, he legitimately had Wolf in his name. Oh boy. Wolf beard, pajama beard, now we got Wea beard, add him into the mix. Why is werewolf beard a trope? I don't get it. <laughs> what is it with neckbeards and wolves? Honestly, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm saying. <laughs> he was easy to talk to, at least. And I found myself confiding in him most of the things troubling me at that time. This moment in time was a bit unstable for me. I was really leaning on him as a friend and confidant. I'd just gotten out of a messy divorce after catching my husband to five years cheating on me on Christmas Eve. Oh, God, that's a heartbreaker. But better five years than ten, I do suppose. Really, I'm sorry that happened to you, OP. That, that's a gut punch. And I was hesitant to jump into another relationship, but I did like Weabeard a lot. He, on the other hand, was not too subtle about his attraction to me and his desire to form a more meaningful connection with me than just being friends. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> Situation like this feels pretty bad. Have you been open with him about your desire to just be friends and he keeps hitting on you? That's not good. As you've probably noticed, I haven't delved into a proper description of our featured creature just yet, and there's a reason for that. I didn't even know what the dude looked like at this point in time. I had shared pictures of myself with him, of course. Nothing racy, I'm not that kind of girl, but all I had received from him in kind were descriptions of what he looked like from his own word of mouth. Oh no, 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 it's the 21st century. You need to have a camera somewhere, something. <laughs> this is all wrong. He described himself as tall, with dark hair and brown eyes, muscular. Typical stuff that would make anybody picture a decently attractive person. Not that this is the only body type I find attractive. My ex-husband was five foot nine and pushing 400 pounds. I tend to fall in love with the person, not their physical appearance. I can't say I feel the same way, honestly. <laughs> physical appearance opens the door, then you fall in love with the person. I think that's how I go. Uh, I by no means consider myself to be like the epitome of attractiveness. I stand at a whopping five foot three inches, perfect height for a nut punch if you make me angry. I weigh about 110 pounds soaking wet. Hair normally dyed a dark color, but naturally a chestnut brunette, greenish blue eyes, and the palest of all white chicks that you've ever seen. Casper ain't got nothing on me. I blind people during the summer. <laughs> during these first few weeks talking with Weabeard, while sharing pictures of what I looked like, I did ask him to send some of his own, and all I would get in response was, I'm really shy about sharing pics. Or, oh, my camera doesn't work at the moment. <laughs> I'm not buying it, dude. You really like this girl? You gotta bite the bullet. You gotta take the plunge, or else it's gonna be an online thing forever, and you can keep pretending that you're muscular or whatever. You guys, I'm not stupid, <laughs> I swear. I meet this guy online, he has a great personality, he works out, he's tall, dark, and handsome, but he won't share any pictures with me or even get on a voice call. Of course, I was highly suspicious. Those flags were waving in my face more frantically than one of those wild wacky inflatable arm flailing tube man, wild wacky inflatable arm flailing tube man. But be that as it may, I, for some reason, decided to overlook this. Oh boy. <laughs> I didn't have any right to demand that some stranger show me what he looked like over the internet because despite having talked to him for a couple of weeks at this point, we were still just that, strangers to one another. He had every right to guard his identity from me. Like he said, how did he actually know that I was who I said I was? This all changed in one random summer day when Weabeard decided to accidentally send me the first of many unsolicited uh, uh, pickle pictures. 
<laughs> sausage selfies, if you will. Like you're embarrassed to, to show an actual picture of yourself, but you're showing your most private parts? What is going on? And then, of course, he tries to cop out and call it an accident. <laughs> uh, oh, man, this is, this is so bad. If you're not out at this point, I don't know what to tell you. We are already so far beyond unacceptable. We a beard sends a picture over Discord. Most girls can't handle my size. <laughs> Two moments later. Oh my god. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> OP. Oh my god. <laughs> we a beard. <laughs> you like it? OP. I thought your camera wasn't working. We a beard. Well, I went out and bought a new one yesterday. All of this is just super sus, dude. What are you talking about? And the first thing he sends me is a, a pickle? Really? Not only was this a pickle, but it was a rather large pickle. Like, almost scary. I don't know if a lot of guys are aware, but there is such a thing as too big. All right, but do you actually think this guy is slinging that kind of schmeat? Or, or is he just downloading stuff from online and sending it over? Like, yeah, this is totally me. <laughs> Dig the hole even deeper in hopes that someday she'll love you for no reason. Because the truth is, she has no idea who you actually are. So needless to say, this picture had made our interactions in the coming days slightly awkward. OP, but why, why are you still interacting with them though? <laughs> <laughs> it's time to go. Neither of us brought it up, and I didn't want to start pressing the issue of him having no excuse now not to send me an appropriate picture of himself, lest the pickle incident spring right back up in my face. Pardon my phrasing. <laughs> but it was actually him that made the first move in this regard. Of course it was. He had a plan this entire time. We a beard. Hey, so now that I have a camera, did you want to do a video call on Discord sometime? OP? Really? Uh, sure. I'd love to. Maybe we could watch a movie or play a game or something on call. We a beard. Yeah, that sounds fun. How about we do it this weekend? Will that work? OP? Yeah, I'm off work. It's perfect. I'll, uh, I'll see you then. Oh, oh, this is, this is not going to be good. <laughs> I looked up from my phone with my heart literally leaping out of my chest. I was going to do a Discord call with this person that I'd been talking to now for about a month. That had been a complete enigma and that I did kind of start to like. I mean, like, you know, like, like. <laughs> I was nervous as all hell. No, I'm sure it's going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> the day of our scheduled call, I remembered spending a lot of time looking for the perfect outfit to wear, deciding on what I should do with my hair, if I should wear makeup or not, just the general stuff that I normally worry about before I meet some stranger for the first time. This guy was cool, sweet, funny, a little dorky, but so was I to be honest, and he had become the closest person in my life at this moment, and I had absolutely no idea what he even looked like. And now, I was about to find out. I don't know, man. Some things are just better left as mysteries, I think. <laughs> this is gonna be ultra disappointing, and uh, I'm kind of living for it. I was absolutely floored. I got my camera ready, adjusted my hair, checked my face, and waited. Soon, the little Discord jingle was ringing out from my computer, and I straightened up, grabbed my mouse, and with a deep, shaking breath, I clicked the green button gleaming at me on the screen. What met me on the other side had all of my hopes and dreams crashing down around me. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Have I lost some of you yet? No, you've only just hooked me in! Sorry this story starts off a little slow, but I promise the next part I'll definitely be getting into the thick of it. All of it. Take care, guys. Thanks for reading once again. I hope you're all well. Don't forget to check out Red X on YouTube. Mute. <laughs>
<laughs> I was planning to only do the first two parts, but I can't drop it here. I need the mystery to be unveiled. What does he look like? How terrible is it? <laughs> Let's find out immediately as we jump into part number three right now. But first, I wanted to remind you if you haven't subscribed or liked on the video yet, then maybe you could because you listen this far, so obviously you're enjoying and I'd like to see you come back for future videos. Thank you so much. Catfished by a neckbeard, part number three. If you haven't seen the first two parts to this, please do feel free to check them out. The rest of this won't make much sense without them, to be honest. I've been kind of stewing on how to approach this next part of my experience because it is by far going to be the most embarrassing part. Not the abuse part, but just like embarrassing in general. I'm not super proud of my decisions. I should have run away like immediately when these next occurrences happened with Weabeard, but I didn't. Just bad decisions on my part, but getting all this off my chest is the sole reason that I even made a Reddit account, and I'm starting to lose my nerve and even wanting to continue posting this all here. I'ma put on my big girl pants and just muscle through it. Spoilers, there are some mature themes, but I will keep it PG. Well, thank you for that, Mute. <laughs> I thank you, Susan thanks you. I don't think you should beat yourself up too much about what went on in the past. Like, okay, now you know that you should have walked away immediately, and I think that's a win in itself. You had to go through some, some crappy stuff, learn some hard lessons, but the lessons are learned. You, you don't have to go through this again. Let the healing begin. Anyway, <laughs> Wea Beard had lied to me completely about what he looked like. Surprise, surprise. He was not dark haired. He was not muscular. He wasn't even tall. I was obviously upset that I was lied to. This guy on the screen in front of me looked to be about 40 something due to the deep furrows across his forehead and his receding hairline, which was red. He was a ginger, pale skin, freckles, all of that. He didn't even look the least bit presentable being unshaven and disheveled and wearing a stained white v-neck t-shirt. Ugh. The only thing I felt that he didn't lie to me about were his eyes, which were in fact brown. <laughs> I, I love that OP went through all of this trying to get set up. And this dude, this pig, this big Ed incarnate, <laughs> he couldn't even be bothered. What a dumpster fire. <laughs> you ever talk with someone online and kind of imagine what they might look like based on how they tell you? And then you formed a sort of relationship with said person. And then you do feel kind of let down when you're finally able to see them. Well, that was this, but like times a hundred thousand. <laughs> I was not attracted to him in the slightest physically. Unfortunately, being the doormat that I am, after kind of establishing a relationship with this guy, I didn't have the heart to call it off just because of his appearance. Okay, but OP, it wouldn't be just his appearance. It's his appearance with the fact that he blatantly lied to you. You're well within your rights to walk away, okay? Don't let nobody play you like this. I already wasted enough of my time. I am out. I felt like I'd be seen as shallow for doing so. I loved his personality, just, uh... Not his features. <laughs> oh, what happened? What happened to the thing he said in part two, though? Like you fall in love with the person and not, and not their physical appearance, right? That's what this dude was banking on the whole time. <laughs> Apparently, his appearance was uh, a little too much. Also, his room. Oh my god, his room. <laughs> It looked like the beardiest of all the neckbeard nests that I have ever seen. I mean, I could almost smell it through the screen. Clothes haphazardly tossed everywhere, dirty dishes piled up on the edge of the desk, like a trillion empty soda cans and two liters just everywhere. Even a rack of katanas up on the wall and some anime figurines. Were the figurines in jars? <laughs> You get the idea. You can't imagine my horror one day when, while we were talking, he lifted up one of these two liters, which previously held brown soda, and it was full of a light 
yellow liquid. Yeah, that was definitely urine. I asked him, and he admitted it. Disgusting. I thought people only joke about doing that kind of stuff. Then you've never raided in World of Warcraft, OP. <laughs> uh, no, I, I wish it was only a joke, but it definitely isn't. And here's the proof. Unfortunate. Another thing that became vastly apparent was that he had lied to me about his little pickle picture. I mean, I'm not like a Sherlock or anything, but in the picture of the pickle he had sent me, there was a white water-cooled tower with blue lighting in it under a nice dark hardwood desk in the background of the picture. Yet, he didn't own a water-cooled computer, and the room in the background looked nothing like the room that he was in on camera with me. So I straight up asked him, did you send me a fake pickle pick? Your room looks, uh, pretty different. He got this super sheepish look on his face and he admitted that, yeah, he did send me a picture of a random one that he screenshotted from P-Hub. I asked him why the hell he would do that. And his answer was pretty lackluster to be honest. He was nervous about what I might think of his pickle. Bro, nobody even asked to see that. We are not anywhere near that point. <laughs> Why do you feel the need to do these things? Also, yes, I did in fact confront him about the description that he gave of himself. And he just kind of shrugged it off saying he always just considered himself to be a brunette. And that he did work out, he just stopped doing it as often. Cause he was more interested in chatting with me whenever I was home from work. You mean to tell me that you gained 300 pounds in two months? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not buying it. He liked me a lot, he said. So he didn't want to miss a minute of getting to spend time with me whenever he could. Alert, alert, we've got a level five clinger. <laughs> Three words, scrape them off. I felt extremely guilty about this nagging feeling in the back of my head yelling at me to just tell him right then and there that I was no longer interested in him and wanted to quote unquote break up. So stupidly, I just overlooked all of it. Always trust your gut feelings, OP. He's got a track record, okay? He's gonna continue to pull this kind of crap. The lies didn't even end there, however. At one point, he told me that he owned his house and lived alone and that he had a naughty room in his basement. Ugh, ugh, my spine, I can't. <laughs> I don't know if this was some kind of attempt to impress me. I'm what's called a sex neutral asexual and he knew this. I don't generally get quote unquote in the mood. It just doesn't happen for me like that. I will, however, help my partner out with their needs whenever they are in that sort of mood. The admission of having this naughty room in his basement did nothing more than just give me kind of, I don't know, like cringy vibes, creepy, disgusted. I can't explain the feeling it gives me when people are overly emphatic on sexual things around me. Uncomfortable, to say the very least. In any case, he had this room, but, oh, it's still under construction, so I can't show it to you right now, but it's totally down there. Right. Not like I really actually cared, but I just wanted him to stop lying to try and make himself seem cool to me. No matter how much I tried to get him to understand that he didn't have to lie to me to make me like him, he would constantly come up with ridiculous crap on the daily to try and impress me. Bro, this is so rough. Just pull the plug, would you? <laughs> Put me out of my misery. He's my dog, I'll do it. <laughs> the final straw came when he spent an entire day trying to convince me to do stuff with him over Cam. Yeah, that kind of stuff. I told him I didn't feel comfortable with it, but he kept pushing and pressing and nagging until I finally gave in. Block button's right there, bro. <laughs> Let's go. So there I sat, starting to remove my shirt when into his room bursts 
some woman on his end of the screen. <laughs> Bobby, Bobby, I told you to knock. <laughs> oh, I love it. I quickly pulled my shirt back down and shoved my camera to face the wall and heard him mute his end of the call. A few moments later, he was back. Mute, babe. I'm sorry, are you still there? Hello? This is the perfect chance to just ghost. I I'm never <laughs> interacting with this dude again. I reluctantly repositioned my camera and glared at him. I know I was probably bright red in the face. I felt hot with anger and embarrassment. Who was that? I demanded. Oh, uh, my mom is staying here with me for a little while. Uh, I'm taking care of her. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's the line. As if right on cue, his bedroom door bursts open again, and in walks his mother, this time carrying a small pile of folded laundry in her arms. <laughs> uh, oh, that's so rich and creamy. Oh, delicious cringe. <laughs> <laughs> we up here! You need to clean up your room! Put these away! Don't just toss them on the floor and forget about them! She left the room and shut the door, and I stared absolute hellfire into Weabeard. You live with your mom, don't you? Weabeard knew he was caught in his lie at this point, so he just kind of drooped in his chair and rubbed at his face, and then finally admitted that yeah, he, he lived with his mom. It wasn't his house. Why lie? I was so effing pissed at this point, ready to break things off of them right then and there, and well within my rights to do so, to be honest. I really should have. God, I was so stupid. Hindsight is twenty twenty. but yes, I guarantee you'll never have an experience like this again. We learn and we grow. Don't beat yourself up about your past, because we're all here commiserating with you. Weabeard promptly started begging me not to leave him, even starting to tear up a bit, and mournfully explained that he had lied to me because he thought if I found out he was a 29-year-old man still living at his parents' house, then I'd want nothing more to do with him. That, quote, You're so way out of my league. He'd never normally get a chance with someone like me. He added that if he, quote, Didn't try to play himself up a bit, I never would have given him the time of day. Quote, 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 quote. Enough apostrophes. Anyway, seeing him bawl like this and snivel and pitifully wipe at his face with the back of his hands melted the goddamn ice fortress I had just erected around me at this point. I felt bad for him. I truly did. This poor misguided dude had shoved me so far up on a pedestal that he thought I wouldn't even look twice at him if he didn't fabricate some amazing story about who he was. It was a pedestal that I don't really think I deserved, like, at all. I'm not some celebrity model beauty queen worth all that effort, for God's sake. And I softened, and I told him as much. I'm not gonna leave you, Weabeard. I just want you to understand that I don't care about all this impressive stuff. When I say I like you, I mean, I like you for you. It's got nothing to do with material crap. It's your personality that I like, I just want you to start being honest with me. Please, I chastised. But see, there's the rub, OP. Dude can't even be honest with himself. The only card he had left to play was the pity card. And I get it, you know, you hate to see a fat man cry. But starting a relationship or continuing a relationship out of pity? Yeah, that's just not it. Weabeard finally quit blubbering, because he got what he wanted. And he nodded and we just moved on from there. Hopefully, I thought, into a more open and honest relationship, now that all the dirty laundry was aired out. <laughs> I was wrong. Duh. His lying wasn't even the worst of what he did to me. Eventually, I made the greatest mistake of all time. I allowed Weabeard to move in with me, into my apartment, in real life. Oh no, 
You're gonna live in the neckbeard nest next. Oh, it gets so much worse, but I'm getting tired and I think I've spilled enough of my guts for one evening. Take care and once again, thank you for sticking with me through all this. It's hard for me to relive all of it, but it is therapeutic to get it all out, you know? Mute. If you're brave enough to write it, I'm brave enough to read it, OP. Lots of mistakes were made in this story, but you hold yourself accountable for them. It doesn't seem like you're gonna make them again, so I can't even be mad at you. I'm just like, yeah, that's a thing that you learned. Hopefully other people watching this video will learn from your experiences. It's not weird, because she's actually a thousand-year-old dragon. Weabeard moves in. Welcome back. If you need a recap of the situation thus far, the first three posts are linked in one video, conveniently packaged for your consumption. That is in the description. Warning, this post will make mention of a lot of bad situations. Turn back now if you're sensitive to uh, that sort of thing. This is going to be a long one, and for that, I apologize in advance. Weabeard and I had been dating for a few months at this time, online, of course, since he lived in the neighboring state. Over the course of these months, it had become apparent to me that Weabeard was not exactly happy in his current situation. His parents were insufferable, and he complained about them on an almost daily basis. They treat me like I'm still a child. I can't stand it here. And my dad is so verbally abusive. He's always on my butt about one thing or another. He had complained one day over a call. Weabeard was not lying about the abuse from his father, and I knew this because there had been several occasions where I'd had the pleasure of being on call with him when his dad would burst into the room and berate him over some small, mundane thing. A hair left in the shower, a glass on the kitchen counter, his shoes not put away neatly by the door, etc. I could tell that Weabeard's father ran a strict household, neat and tidy and prim and proper, at all times. He was a former army lieutenant, and it definitely showed. I did sympathize with Weabeard on his rather strict upbringing, as I myself had been what they referred to as a military brat. It does seem a bit overboard to me, but I don't know. You're 29, it's your dad's house, like, <laughs> get it together. You don't like it, then move out. And he does, with OP, as if that's going to, to change anything. The poison has been in Weabeard's heart this entire time. You can't run from something like that. Anyway, I won't delve too deeply into my own upbringing, but I was raised on base. My father was in the Marine Corps, stationed at Camp Pendleton for most of my childhood. He was a well-decorated sergeant that had served in Desert Storm. He had been in Somalia for the first three years of my life, spent some time as a drill instructor, the whole nine yards. He also ran a tight ship around the house, and boy, did he have a set of lungs on him when he was angry about something. War had hardened him. Despite all this, I never had the slightest impression that my father didn't love me. He doted on me as any good father should. Rest in peace, Dad. I love you. Ah, dang. I'm sorry he's gone, OP, but it does sound like he did right by you. Weabeard's father, however, seemed to treat him as if he were a disappointment. Like the sheer presence of him even being in his house disgusted him. I got the feeling that his father resented Weabeard for not turning out more like himself. A badass army lieutenant willing to give his life for his country. Weabeard was nothing like his father. He was softer spoken, shorter, a little pudgy, and extremely submissive. Anytime his father came around, I could see a physical change in Weabeard's demeanor. He looked like a puppy about to get spanked. I never witnessed his father ever actually hitting him, but Weabeard did flinch sometimes, and to me that's an indication that he may have been physically abused at some point as well. I never had the heart to ask. One day, as it were, Weabeard and I sat down for our nightly ritual of jumping on rabbit cast. I don't know if it's still around, but it's basically like a video streaming thing. And we were finding some anime to binge together or a movie to watch when Weabeard's father audibly slammed his door open so hard that it made even me jump through the voice call. He then proceeded to curse and belittle Weabeard to the point of literal tears, and I had seen enough. 
Hey, babe, you ever thought of, like, moving out, getting your own place? I asked, after his father had stormed back out of the room. Weabeard did have a great job at the time. He was by no means a lazy person when it came to holding down that job. I felt like there was no reason he should have to put up with this kind of treatment. Yeah, I've thought about moving out before, but I wouldn't know where to begin. I don't even know how to get an apartment. I I've never done that before. I mean, there's no time like the present. <laughs> it's not like this information is going to come to you in the middle of the night. If you want to find out, then be a big boy and, and go find out. I briefly explained the process to him, but it seemed to be out of his realm of understanding. No matter what advice I gave, he just didn't seem to grasp it, or maybe he was just too apprehensive to take a step like that. I don't really know. I definitely lean towards the apprehension thing. If he really wanted to do it, he would have done it by now, right? Eventually, I caved. Well, why don't you just come live with me? I asked. Dun, dun, dun. The moment I said this, Weabeard's eyes lit up like a kid's on Christmas Day. Uh, are you serious? Really? You'd let me move in with you? I nodded at him. Well, normally I'd say moving in together after just a few months is moving way too fast, but I don't think it's healthy for you to be there with your dad the way he is, you know? Besides, you can just stay with me until you get on your own feed, and then I can help you get your own place somewhere nearby. Oh, hope floats, does it not? <laughs> we Beard was absolutely ecstatic. He exuberantly promised me that if I really did let him move in with me, he'd get a new job straight away, and we could split the rent and the bills, etc. It all sounded great to me, as I was your typical starving artist. I had a job, mind you, but my job was one of those where they cut people's hours down to like 35 a week and strictly enforced no overtime. The money from the art that I did for the virtual community that We Abeard and I interacted on was really my saving grace at this point in time. This is just like the perfect storm of unfortunate situations, is it not? And so the plan was set into motion. I would meet We Abeard in real life for the first time and immediately allow him to move in with me. We saw this in Mudbeard too. It ain't gonna go well, as if I didn't already know. The next few weeks seemed to fly by, with us chatting excitedly about our newly made plans and all the things that we could do, like turning my spare bedroom into a gaming slash entertainment room, or going out to eat together, watching movies in person, and Weabeard's favorite thing to bring up, finally getting to be intimate with me in real life. Uh. <laughs> As previously stated, I was indifferent to physical affection in general. I'm neutral asexual, as stated before. To stress this again, yes, he knew that about me. I had already had the conversation with him about my sexuality long before this. I wasn't hiding it from him by any means. That was the last thing on my list of things to be stoked about, and he damn well knew that. Yeah, but he doesn't care about how you feel about it. It's all about him. He's just the worst, man. I don't even know how it made it this far. Still. <laughs> well, the closer and closer it got to moving day, Weabeard would push the topic more and more. It seemed to be all that he was focused on. I would bring up a game that we could play together, and he'd be like, Yeah, and then afterward we could have some naughty time. <laughs> I would talk about cooking him my version of chicken gnocchi soup for him to try. Oh, I can't wait to see you look at all cooking in the kitchen, and I might sneak up behind you. <laughs> yeah, I get it, okay? You're a coom brain degenerate. Can you, can you just hold a normal conversation for like 30 seconds? Jesus. I brought up that... I'd want to be cautious in telling my parents about our relationship at first. Yeah, they don't need to know all the dirty things I'm doing to their little girl. <laughs> it was really starting to creep me the hell out. It's never too late to nope out. Just be like, look, I thought about it. I don't think it's a great idea after all, okay? 
So finally, OP straight out asks Weabeard, are you a virgin or something? After he had made another offhand comment. Like, seriously, this dude acted so down bad that it gave me major V-card vibes. <laughs> of course not. I, I've been with guys and girls. I don't discriminate, and I'm definitely not one of those. <laughs> I haven't been one for a super long time. Yeah, that's super believable. <laughs> he defended himself adamantly. He seemed genuinely offended that I would even suggest it. Well, can you please tone it down with the dirty talk? It is starting to get, like, really annoying. I huffed at him. Uh, I'm sorry, babe. I I'll stop. I'm just so excited to get to uh, touch you in person. Uh, you're the most beautiful girl I've ever been with, he said dejectedly. And I sighed at this. Now, please don't take me for some ungrateful ice queen. It's not that I don't enjoy compliments about my appearance on occasion, but our whole relationship seemed to have this constant dynamic of him always putting himself down and putting me up on a pedestal. He acted like I was some sort of infallible goddess that had graced him with the unbelievable gift of being in my presence. I mean, at least he knows that he's not worthy. <laughs> he needs to work on himself a whole heck of a lot more before this is ever gonna work. But if he did all that and it worked out, then I guess we wouldn't be reading the story. So uh, I guess we could be grateful even for the things that seem completely terrible. <laughs> this kind of thing makes me really uncomfortable. Mainly because I don't see myself that way, and I never have. I'm still working internally over the course of many years to overcome my extremely low self-esteem and the discomfort for any kind of sexual attention that's aimed my way. I will now share with you all something that I have kept inside of me for a very long time. This is the part where those that are sensitive to abuse should probably stop reading or listening. So when I was a child, about eight years old to maybe 12, I was abused by my mother's dad. I refused to call that monster my grandfather because he took everything from me. Jesus, Jesus, dude. I'm so sorry that happened to you, OP. Honestly, I hope that life in turn took everything from him. I mean, I guess you did warn us, but that, that was heavier than I thought it was gonna be. I'm ready to put him up against the wall. You just give me an address, all right? <sighs> I sometimes wonder if I might have turned out to be a different person had it not been for his actions. Would I be more self-confident, more outgoing? Would I not struggle with social anxiety and panic attacks? Would I have been more successful in life in general? My whole life after this has been a struggle for me. Always second-guessing my decisions, always too scared to take the leap, Take a good opportunity, put myself out there and make something of myself. It's like I have this dirty secret about myself that makes me unworthy of that kind of praise and attention and it has ruined my life. <sighs> These are the sorts of things that should be unpacked with a, with a therapist. I don't have the answers regarding this, I'm afraid. I've never had anything like that happen to me, thank God, but I still have social anxiety and panic attacks, so I don't know, maybe you can take some solace in that. Lordy. Furthermore, I had just gotten out of a divorce in which I had found my ex-husband cybering with other women online, and when confronted about it, he told me that he had loved me, but he had fallen out of love with me a long time ago. He told me that I didn't give him enough physical attention, and he had nowhere else to turn but to other women online. How about you, like, open up to the person that you're in a relationship with, you dope? <laughs> also, I think the cybering thing is really funny. We're, we're really old, aren't we? <laughs> Nowadays, it's just like, here's a sausage selfie. But back in the day, all we had was words. A picture would take three minutes to download. <laughs> uh, uh. Oh, uh, so yeah, he said it was my fault that he had to end up cheating on me. He was not even the first person to cheat on me at this point either. I'd been in many relationships, as you can imagine. 
being asexual makes it hard for me to find suitable partners. Yeah, and a lot of people just lie, you know? They think it'll all be fixed once they've got the job, and that's just never the case. Be honest about your intentions. It's not that hard. There's a lot of people that care way too much about that one particular aspect of a relationship, at least in my opinion. Of the four people that I had been with before we appeared, I had been cheated on by every single one. Not only cheated on, but abused. And when you think little of yourself, it's easy to fall victim to people you, in your own head, think that you deserve. Yeah, sort of like that self-punishment that we saw in the Unfortunate Nookie Saga, no? So, you think, like, you can't do any better than this. Like, this is your only option. I've been hit, I've been choked, had my jaw broken, and the very worst of it all, one of my exes attacked me with a box knife. We were arguing about a male coworker of mine giving me a ride home from work one day, which was a mortal sin in his eyes. God, that is like the insecurest of the insecure. I wasn't allowed to interact with males around him or even look at them without him beating the living crap out of me. At some point, I dared to tell him to go screw and turn to walk away into the bedroom. He came up behind me, yanked a handful of my hair, threw me down on the bed and proceeded to punch, I thought, at me, wildly, cursing at me, flinging the nastiest insults. He was actually lacerating my legs as I lay tucked in the fetal position. One of the cuts severed my right calf all the way to the bone. What, dude, what? This is absolute insanity. I know you've heard it many times before, OP, but hopefully you can believe it a little bit more coming from me. I, I know you probably watched a bunch of videos, right? We're, we're basically parasocial friends at this point. You don't deserve any of that, all right? You are better than all of this. I, I know you've moved onwards and upwards from, from watching in the Discord a bit, but the fact that you had to go through it at all, it's just... <sighs> life is so unfair, man. So then the coward fled the house and left me there to bleed to death. Or so he thought. I only realized that he had been cutting me, not punching me, when I tried to slide off the bed and stand, only to drop like a rock when my legs wouldn't support me. I had to literally drag myself across the house, tie a towel around my legs, and call an ambulance. You are such a fighter. I, I hope you put him through hell for this. There is no amount of revenge that would be too much at this point. Pure adrenaline, I think, was the only thing that kept me from passing out at this time, and really, it's all kind of a blur to me now. Seemed like it happened so fast. The paramedics told me that I had lost a lot of blood, and that I was extremely lucky I had wrapped the towel as tightly as I had. I was in a wheelchair for two weeks, a walker for one week, and finally crutches as I went through physical therapy to relearn how to use my newly attached muscles and tendons. I am shocked, man. I don't even have the words for this. The bottom dropped out. We we have just lost cabin pressure. It is going to come back around at some point. Might just take us a while to get there. The scars I have left on my body from this attack are a constant reminder to myself that if pushed to my absolute limit, I do have it in me to fight through it. That's what I'm saying, at least. I am using this learned courage to share my story with you all here today. I know this was a lot, and it might seem irrelevant to the We A Beard story specifically, but I promise you it will put a lot more stuff that happens later into perspective for you, knowing all of this. Uh, that's enough about me for now, enough doom and gloom, uh, I guess we're moving on. I mean, you might move on, I I'm gonna need a few minutes to process all this. <sighs> we A Beard knew about all of this, the things that I had been through were one of the things that I had shared with him as we talked about our pasts and our lives in general over those first few weeks of getting to know each other. He had told me in turn about his father's mental and verbal assaults and that he had been with a girl through high school that had cheated on him and how he was scarred by this, etc. I suppose I saw him as a poor, lost, broken soul, much like myself, one that I could protect and help to heal his wounds. Bro, he has taken advantage of you full stop. My daddy yells at me and a girlfriend in high school cheated on me. Welcome to the human experience, like. <laughs>
<laughs> I don't really have a lot of sympathy for this dude, if any. So, when I blatantly overlooked all of these initial flaws and red flags of his, please understand that it wasn't out of pure ignorance. It was more out of blind faith that he truly was just a broken thing in need of fixing. And that I had similar experiences in life, so perhaps we could fix each other. He seemed like the perfect fit for me at the time. He was so gentle and kind and sweet, always complimenting me and seeing me as some sort of savior. See, what he's doing here is playing into your savior complex. He's sitting there going, hey, you can save me. Only you can save me. Are you going to save me? And you can't say no because you're a good person. He's not kind or sweet. He lied to you. He continues to lie to you. Man, I, I hope this story ends with some fireworks for real. <laughs> so yes, he was a far cry from the guys I'd been with before. So all of his gross outbursts and his fixation on how amazing it was to be with a beautiful girl sort of got swept under the rug on my part. Finally, it was moving day. He would be making the four hour drive to my state and we would be meeting in person. And I would help him unpack all his stuff when he got to my place. They say you never really truly know someone until you've lived with them and I wholeheartedly agree on that opinion. And this was most definitely the case with Weabeard. Let's just say that of all the things he told me about himself, right down to his interests in things, it all began to unravel and unfold before my very eyes. I wish I could say I was shocked. <laughs> you can't keep up lies forever. But I'm gonna end this here for the moment because I need a minute. Thanks again for reading and sorry for all the triggery stuff. As always, I hope you have a great day slash night and I will catch you next time. Well, this definitely got heavier a lot quicker than I expected and yet it is a lot of backstory that I can apply to your actions and behaviors, but I don't want to leave the video off on just that. So we'll go ahead and, and stick one more in here and I guess we'll see how that goes. We a beard. It's not weird because she's a thousand years old. <laughs> yeah, welcome back to my saga. This post is going to contain uncomfortable elements. I'm warning you right now. In fact, this whole saga is just one big ball of uncomfortable. I mean, we got through Unfortunate Nookie. We'll get through this one. It's going to be fine. Anyway, I'll have to take a second here and thank everyone that commented on my last posts. You're all so sweet and... I appreciate you taking the time out of your days to comfort me and offer kind words. I was not expecting this amount of kindness from the community because of the warnings from friends of mine about toxic people on here, which does happen. <laughs> Make no mistake, there is some toxicity on Reddit, but I don't find that the, the Neckbeard Stories community is generally part of that. One or two bad eggs, mostly supportive. Thank you all for joining me again in this next step in my life towards healing and moving on. Red X, thank you for your sound advice and giving me the encouragement to keep going. I got you, fam. Alex, thank you for reaching out to me privately. You have no idea how eternally grateful I was and will be forever that you made me feel less down on myself. You're both beautiful souls, and I wish you guys the best life. Honestly, I think I'm living the best life. This is the job that I've always wanted to do, and people like you writing quality stories makes this possible. So I'm going to go ahead and thank you right back and wish the same thing for you, OP. The day had finally come. Oh no. <laughs> we a beard showed up in my parking lot in a bright red Chevy truck with a small U-Haul in tow. He stood about four inches taller than me, about five foot seven, with his flaming red unkempt hair and his plain white v-neck, his slightly crooked, thin-lipped smile surrounded by a thick, unruly red beard and a pair of bronze wireframe glasses. I tried to push it out of my mind that he had one of those faces now that I was seeing him in the flesh. I don't really know how else to describe it, but he looked kind of like a kitty fiddler. Oh, that's not good, and I do kind of know what you're talking about. A semi-smile that doesn't quite reach up to those cold, vacant, vacuous eyes. Generally, I just say coom brains because it applies to a lot more things, but he might be. I, I guess it remains to be seen. 
I don't know if any of you will get what I mean when I say this. I do. Just something about the look of him and the mannerisms of this person gave me those creepy vibes. Maybe because my mother's dad had been a redhead as well. I'm not really sure. Oh, Jesus, the plot thickens. In any case, something inside of me was just screaming at me to run inside and lock my door. I couldn't do that. Not after he'd driven four hours to get here, and I had been the one to extend the invitation. Nah, dude. <laughs> invitation revoked. Drive four hours back. Get the hell out of here. It's fine. Break the social contract. It's not going to do anything but hold you back. Come here, he said in a sing-songy voice, opening up his arms and lowering his head dramatically. The way he said it was like predatory. Yeah, sing-songy, like you'd say to a child. The pieces are all starting to fall into place. I awkwardly plastered a smile onto my face and walked into his embrace, patting him slightly on the back as he bear-hugged the absolute crap out of me. I am not big on touching. I don't like hugs that last for too long either. They make me feel claustrophobic. It's no surprise that when he held me so tightly, for what seemed like, I don't know, a freaking hour, all the while huffing my hair, I started to get a bit uncomfortable in his arms. Ew, dude, ew, dude, ew, dude. Biggest creep vibes, dude. Ooh! Say something. Please say something. But I don't think she'll say anything because uh, of, of past abuse. It's all that mindset of like, yeah, I hate this, but I guess it could be worse. Ah, uh, so unfortunate. Then I felt his hands slowly trying to make their way down my backside. Oh, I pushed away from him a bit forcefully, keeping an awkward grin pasted on my face. I could feel my cheeks burning. I didn't want to hurt his feelings, but I was not okay with him touching my butt just yet. Let's, um, let's get your stuff brought in so we can drop the U-Haul off in a little while. I suggested. He thankfully agreed, and we spent the next hour or so just bringing in all his crap. A while later, we dropped the U-Haul off and then came back to the apartment to start unpacking his things. Nothing eventful really happened at this point, other than me catching him occasionally staring at me with a grin on his face, or his comments about how I was smaller and looked younger than he thought I would in person. That is not normal. <laughs> you don't think that's eventful? I think that speaks volumes. Disgusting! But OP says, okay, it was all pretty normal. Until I happened upon a small box, taped shut with duct tape, instead of being folded closed like all the rest. I began peeling the tape off, and he suddenly whipped his head around and charged towards me, making a grab for the box. Hey, give it here, he said frantically. I giggled mischievously and held it out of his grasp. What's in here? All your hentai books? <laughs> I teased. Please, just give it to me, mute, he said sternly, without any hint of humor in his voice. The light-hearted mood I was in dropped immediately, and I was staring at him with probably the most incredulous look on my face. What's in it? I pressed again in a flat tone, finally handing it off to him. <laughs> it's just my trophies! Ew, what? No. <laughs> Get me out of here! Weabeard had trouble looking me in the eye at this moment, which only made my curiosity all the more persistent. I'm the worst kind of person when it comes to keeping a secret from me. You can't! <laughs> it's just like my wife, too. It's not my finest trait, but if you are hiding something from me, I will find out what it is. No surprise birthday parties for me. I'll spoil them immediately. I know this is an annoying as hell part of my personality, but I really just don't like not being in the know about stuff that directly affects me. I mean, it's fair. I'm taking bets for what's in the box. I think it's a bunch of missing girls' driver's licenses. <laughs> Whatever Weabeard was hiding in that box, to me, just seemed like the potential for him to have lied about some other part of himself that he desperately didn't want me finding out about. So naturally, for the next few hours, as we unpacked the rest of his belongings, I pestered him about it. Dirty magazines? No, 
Nasty DVDs? No. Uh, explicit pictures of your ex? No, mute. Someone's ashes? No. Uh, fine, here. Open it. Wea Beard tossed the box back to me, and I caught it, grinning and very pleased with myself. I'm such an a-hole, I know, but it was killing me not knowing. Honestly, to this day, it was the only time that I actually deeply regretted my pushiness. Oh no. I peeled the tape the rest of the way off the box and folded it open. Inside was a folded up piece of construction paper, a Ziploc bag with something in it, a bunched up piece of pink fabric, a photo of a girl, some jewelry that looked like it came from Hot Topic, and a small plushy cat. Weabeard shifted uncomfortably as I started to pull out each item and examine them. The paper was just a note from who I assumed was the girl in the photo. I didn't read it, just set it aside and moved on. Plushy cat, bracelet, photo. I pulled the pink fabric out and was horrified to find that it was a pair of girls' panties with stains on them. And not the kind of stains that a female would leave. <laughs> Ew! Weabeard! I practically screamed, tossing them aside, and then I lifted the Ziploc bag. Inside was a very clearly used prophylactic. I almost threw up. Why are you keeping all this stuff? I shot at him. How long have you had this? Weabeard couldn't meet my eyes, unsurprisingly. That girl that I dated as a freshman, the one that cheated on me, it was back when I was dating her, he mumbled at me. Fourteen years. He had been hanging on to this stuff for fourteen years. That in itself was entirely disturbing to me, but not as disturbing as when I finally had the realization that he was still using the panties and the picture of that girl. He was 29 years old. So for the math magicians, 14 years ago, this girl would have been 15. Oh my God, dude, just when you think it can't get any worse. What? What? Uh, all right, pack all your stuff up in the boxes. You gotta get the hell out of here. I got up, promptly ran to the bathroom and scrubbed my hands raw. I cannot tell you the sheer cacophony of emotions that was playing through me at this moment in time. Weabeard slowly inched his way into the bathroom and stood behind me with a look on his face of pure panic. I'm sorry, you're not mad at me, are you? He said in an almost pleading voice. You are throwing all of that away now! That's disgusting, Weabeard! Freaking gross! Y you realize how all of this looks, right? I knew that I was being harsh in the way that I was speaking to him, but I didn't care. What the hell did he expect? I can't even believe you brought that crap into my apartment! I continued, making a beeline back to the room and hastily grabbing up all the stuff between two fingers and practically throwing it at him. Trash! Now! I ordered. <laughs> I think this is the proper reaction. I don't think it's gonna fix anything. His dad's been yelling at him for years. But you never know if you don't try. <laughs> he hopped into action and disappeared into the kitchen where I kept my trash can. And he came back to the room empty handed and looking guilty as all hell. He didn't throw it away. He hid it somewhere, I guarantee. Uh, I'm really sorry, mute. He repeated under his breath. Later, he had argued that I had completely overreacted to this whole situation, and that it wasn't uncommon for guys to hang on to mementos from past relationships. Was I justified? Was I wrong? I don't know. At the time, though, it felt like something really wrong to me. It felt super wrong that he was still pleasuring himself to a photo of his 15-year-old ex and using her panties to clean up. Oh, God, <laughs> Uh, you were justified. This is not wrong. I've never kept a memento from past relationships. Once it's over, it's over. The reason this guy is incapable of moving on and finding somebody else 15 years later is because he's been hanging on to Pandora's box this whole time. Oh, God. 
A few weeks later, things had calmed down considerably. Thank God. <laughs> no more nasty surprises awaited me, other than the absolutely cringe way that Weabeard would overact out the stuff that he was talking or doing. I don't mean like overreacting, I mean straight up acting. Like he was in a play or something, and he was an actor trying to land that big role. I would make food and he'd take a bite and throw his head back and moan and rub his stomach dramatically. <laughs> or I would get out of the shower wrapped in a towel and he would do this clutching at his heart and pretending to stumble or pointing at me and shaking his finger while shaking his head in that oh you gesture, except he wasn't joking or doing it ironically. He's media poisoned. He's media poisoned and coom brained and we need this to stop. <laughs> I eventually had to tell him to please stop acting that way because it was embarrassing me. I felt embarrassed on his behalf. There was also one other small thing. Weabeard had the worst breath. Like something had crawled in there and died. Yeah, like the roots of his teeth. <laughs> it was chronic. Not really his fault, but oh my god, his breath could melt the balls off a brass monkey. <laughs> you can smell it from six feet away. I think he might have had tonsil stones or something. He brushed, flossed, used medicated mouthwash. Nothing ever helped, so I was extremely hesitant to ever kiss him. You can't brush and floss away a root canal. That tooth is rotting and everybody can smell it. <laughs> Just go to the dentist, please. Weabeard still had issues understanding my asexuality though. Whether it was that he just didn't understand it or didn't care, I will never know. I mean, probably both, but mostly didn't care. He constantly made advances on me at all times. It was so bad that I couldn't even sit next to him without my arm accidentally brushing up against him and him getting visibly aroused. Ew. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating here. I am dead honest to God, serious. He would get a bone bone on just from me touching him anywhere on his body or even from just hugging him. He wasn't subtle about it either. He would try to dry hump me constantly or touch me inappropriately in public so much that I would have to yell, STOP IT! to finally get him to cut the crap. I still, to this day, think he was some kind of addict. It was like, an illness, a relentless illness that he constantly forced on me day and night, week after week, month after month. I started to genuinely worry about the depths of this addiction when he asked me one day if I would be willing to do a little role playing in the bedroom to spice things up. I gave him the benefit of the doubt at this moment and said, okay, I've never done that before, so what did you want to do? I asked. Uh, well, don't freak out. Promise me you won't freak out, he started. Bro, you can't promise that. <laughs> you tell me what it is, and then I'll have the reaction that I have. But OP rolled her eyes at him at this point and said, I'm not going to freak out. Now tell me, I demanded. I kind of want you to like pretend you're innocent and don't understand what banging is and you don't really understand what's happening while we do it, he revealed. Yeah. <sighs> that. Oh my god, dude, it hurts me so deep down in my soul. I already know what the big reveal of the story is gonna be. There's really no doubt about it at this point. He's a kitty fiddler. If not in real life, only because the opportunity hasn't presented itself. I hate this guy, and I would love to see him dead. You can have the fantasies that you have, but this seems like a bridge too far. And of course, that was a big hell no from OP, and I told him this. That hit way too close to home for me, and I was way too uncomfortable playing into this little sick fantasy of his. Weabeard was one of those weaboos. I later found out, that likes to argue that it's not weird because she's literally 10,000 years old. She's just trapped in a kid's body. The more and more I learned about him, the less and less I wanted him even touching me. 
It's so bad, dude. It's so bad. Start the eviction process right now. If you don't have the stomach to get him out of your house by yourself, then make Johnny Law come and do it. This is, this is, it's not going to go well. The situation is only going to devolve. And it's already so devolved that I don't know what happens. We all turn into protozoa. Oh! So yes, I began to distance myself from Weabeard a lot. I would drown him out and just escape onto the virtual client and do my art commissions or chat with my friends on there, watch a movie on my laptop, read a book, get out a pen and paper and just start sketching. You've, you've slowly transformed into a prisoner in your own house. You realize this, right? I would do anything but spend time with him. It wasn't lost on him either that I was growing distant with him. He began to start sighing loudly and moping whenever he saw me starting to log in to the virtual client. This is my job. This is how I make my money. You shut your goddamn mouth. When I would ask him what was wrong, he would deny that anything was wrong. And then I was just imagining him being mopey and acting upset. This is severe suspended adolescence. You realize that? He's acting like a like a 13 or 14 year old. You haven't been 14 for a decade and a half. It's time to get it to hell together. Weabeard said, I always act like this. I don't see what you're talking about. I'm just sitting here normal, he would say. His gaslighting only got worse and worse by the end of our first year together. A year? Bro, <laughs> what? Uh... And it evolved into straight up denying anything I said or pointed out to him to be true. He started to make me feel like I was going crazy, imagining things, like maybe I was the one with the issue. He used this against me a lot, but the worst of it is yet to come. That'll be a story for the next post and video, I'm afraid. I'm starting to get pretty tired. I work tonight and it is 3.20 in the morning as I'm typing this. Take care, everyone, and thank you again for all your love and support. Mute. How can you possibly be this tolerant? <laughs> uh, uh, I think OP has more tolerance in her little finger than I have in my entire body. I couldn't do this. There's about 26 different points where I would have spurned him. Oh, you lied to me about what you look like. Go away. You, 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 you give me creep vibes. Go away. You got a box full of mementos about a high school girl. Go away. He's the worst. He is the worst, and I, I really do fear that it's going to get terrible. But we will continue to plumb the depths. The, the, the cringe is what the audience came for, and you know, it's really delivered today. <laughs> Maybe a bit too much. Can we scoop some of that back in the pan? Jesus Christ. Whew. How much worse could it possibly get? We a beard's jealousy. Welcome back once again. I know I put this one off for a couple of days. I needed to take some personal time and several baths. You and me both. Nothing will ever wash away the memory of this beard. And now the entire audience is stained as well. On a more serious note, my favorite new YouTuber made a video about we a beard. Oh my god, I think she's talking about me. Am I nervous? Hell yeah. Check his channel out if you guys want. He's a good down-to-earth guy and he deserves all the support. Oh, I thank you for being here. If you're watching this, then yes, thank you. He's part of the reason that I kept posting when I started to get cold feet about it. To dirt, you are awesome. Thanks for taking the time to message me and lift my mood. It's because of you that I decided to post today and stop putting it off. Yeah, OP is in the Discord server. Quite active there as well. Very nice to have her. Thanks for hanging out. You guys could join too. Links in the description. All right. Over the course of the next few months, I had only grown more and more distant with Wea Beard, finding myself withdrawing more and more into the virtual community just to kind of escape from him. So of course, he had to find his ways to ruin that for me as well. He would log in and then demand that I place my avatar near his at all times. <laughs> oh god. Uh, he would butt into conversations I was having with my friends on there and then get genuinely upset if I didn't respond to him. He began typing out little role plays in asterisks at me and then got mad if I didn't reciprocate. <laughs> He's living in your house though. This is so ridiculous. <laughs> uh, last but certainly not least, 
he would get absolutely insufferable around any other guy that came anywhere near me. My gay guy friend that I've known for 10 years, nope, he's gotta go. A chick friend of mine that happened to equip a male avatar to show me, she better not stand her pixels anywhere near mine, by God. The most ridiculous part of all of this is that while he did all of this crap, he was literally sitting next to me <laughs> on the couch, no less than two feet away from me. <laughs> uh, oh, that's some of that good deep cringe, isn't it? He would purposely type something out to me on the client, a question, a comment, an interaction, and then get pissed that I wasn't responding to him in the chat. <laughs> Uh, these are levels of insecurity that shouldn't even be scientifically possible. I'm amazed. I'd respond to him in person, you know, because he was sitting right there. This wasn't good enough, apparently. You should respond in the chat room, he would whine. Why? What's the point? You're right here. He would never give me a straight answer, but a friend of mine had a theory. Weabeard was trying to shove it in people's faces that he was my boyfriend, unless anyone dared think they have a chance with me. And the more this bizarre behavior continued, the more I started to agree. It got to the point where he would log into the client from his cell phone in the middle of work to check up on me. If he saw me online or sitting in a chat room with any guys present at all, Jesus, dude, what a mess. And the whole time OP's like, I can fix him. Just a reminder for everybody out there, you can't fix them. It's not your responsibility to fix them. It's time to move on. And eventually OP did, so I guess it's fine. Anyways, not even his own best friend was spared his paranoia. I'm gonna refer to his friend as Krusty Beard. You know when someone breathes through their mouth so much that they form these foamy little crusties at the corners of their mouth? Bro, that means you need to hydrate. <laughs> yeah. As you can plainly see, Krusty Beard is a whole other pile of skin crawling cringe that I am not prepared to get into at this moment. Wea Beard came home one day and told me, I don't feel comfortable with you hanging around in Krusty Beard's chat rooms. <laughs> uh, why not? I asked in confusion. Well, he likes to cyber with girls a lot, and I don't know, he, he's kind of a philanderer. <laughs> I blinked stupidly at him for what seemed like eons. Well, I just don't want anything like that happening behind my back, he continued. Yeah, uh, okay, well, I understand that, but I'm freaking asexual, you absolute potato, I shot at him. I'm the last person on this earth that you should worry about getting with anyone behind your back. Somehow that didn't make him feel better because the insecurity is coming from inside the beard. This doesn't even scratch the surface of the absolute hatred he reserved for another friend of mine, however. During the time that I had been growing distant with Wea Beard, I'd been getting closer to a mutual friend of ours. I'm gonna name him Isaac after the main character in one of our favorite games. Binding of Isaac? Sick, sick. <laughs> Isaac was a normal, non-beardy guy that met Wea Beard and I through the virtual community because of his shared interest in art. He had expressed a desire to learn how to do what I did, creating texture maps that he could equip on his avatar. He was also in a similar situation to me, feeling trapped in a relationship with his boyfriend of over 10 years, I won't go into too much detail on that out of respect for him, but his boyfriend had almost catfished him, only showing older pictures of himself when he was thinner and much more attractive looking. They dated for five years online, and then Isaac moved out to be with him and found out that he was not the person in the pictures whatsoever. I mean, are we taking into account the fact that they dated for five whole years? <laughs> That's half a decade, I don't know. At least they were pictures of him. Old pictures of him, but yeah. <laughs> His boyfriend had been cyborging with other guys. You know, through the cell phone. I can't remember what the Zoomers call it. <laughs> His boyfriend was a grade A addict for physical intimacy. 
Isaac has the same problem that I do when it comes to finding a stable relationship. He's asexual as well. He has his own reasons that are almost as traumatic as my own, but again, out of respect, we will not delve into them. So, we were spending a lot of time on call through Discord, just kind of mutually venting out our frustrations when our boyfriends weren't around. Oh, this Discord server is like one long hen night, right? <laughs> <laughs> we appeared had previously been super cool with Isaac, even buying him Steam games and chatting with him daily on the client. The moment that he and I started spending more time together, everything changed. Anytime Isaac and I found a common interest in something, be it a game or music, art style, YouTube channel, what have you, we appeared would suddenly have a great seething dislike for said thing. Isaac. Dead Space is like one of my favorite games. I really like the storyline. OP, hell yeah, I love Dead Space, man. We a beard. Dead Space sucks. <laughs> it's super overrated. Isaac, hey, did you know Meat Canyon uploaded a new video? OP, yeah, I watched it. It was so cringy, dude. We a beard. Uh, Meat Canyon's gross. Why do you watch that stuff? Uh, because it's gross. <laughs> Art is just supposed to make you feel something. It doesn't have to be something good. So on and so forth until Wea Beard hit me with the absolute dumbest thing he ever could have said. Isaac and I had expressed a mutual interest in dragons. I like dragons because my father had liked dragons. My dad owned a dojo and taught mixed martial arts after he'd been discharged from the military and the mascot he had chosen for his dojo had been a Chinese dragon. Weabeard decided, for whatever reason, on this fine day to tell me, I'm kinda getting sick of dragons. <laughs> uh, who asked you, dude? What is... <laughs> Such a non sequitur. Uh, I just kinda looked at him. What the hell are you talking about, sick of dragons? What does that even mean? <laughs> <laughs> OP gets it. I don't know. I'm just sick of hearing about him, he said. <laughs> Is that an everyday topic of conversation for you? Jesus. <laughs> okay, well, thanks for crapping all over the memory of my father, I guess, I said. Suddenly, Weabeard seemed to realize what he had just done and tried to backpedal and apologize, but... I was done listening to it. You know, Weabeard, I find it funny that anything Isaac likes, you suddenly hate. Even stuff that you told me before that you liked as well. Or did you suddenly forget that you told me that? I think you just don't like Isaac, and you're acting like a jealous a-hole, I accused. I don't have anything against Isaac. He's my friend too. And I never said I hated anything he liked. You must be remembering the wrong person saying that or something. We appeared gaslighted. No, I know what you've said and you're not pulling this crap with me again. And if you like Isaac so much, why are you being such a d to him lately? You think we're hooking up behind your back or something? He's with another guy. And he's asexual. Weabeard denied this accusation as well, of course. Jesus, dude, why does every neckbeard level deflection up to like max level immediately? <laughs> it's just getting ridiculous. Unbeknownst to me, during the time that all of this was going on, Weabeard had been incessantly messaging Isaac on Discord, asking him for advice on what to do in order to keep our relationship going. Isaac told him, Well, she's already been in a lot of controlling and abusive relationships, man, so all this stuff you're doing, like demanding she interact with you in a certain way, or forcing her to sit or stand with you, or telling her you don't want her logging into the client. Yeah, Weabeard had actually told me one day that he didn't want me logging in because he didn't want me hanging out with my friends. But isn't that also where you do work? Okay, never mind. All of that stuff you're doing is just going to drive her further and further away. You need to just let her be her and stop forcing her attention, Isaac finished. Pretty sound advice, in my opinion. Do you think that Weabeard took this advice? Hell no! 
He just ramped up the gaslighting, the jealous behavior, and the stupid comments about hating anything that Isaac and I had a shared interest in. Like, really, by choosing to say that you don't like the thing, all you're doing is ostracizing yourself. You realize that, right? <laughs> Finally, we come to the last year of this horrible relationship, and it certainly ended with a bang. Eventually, I did break up with Weabeard. Huzzah! He moved into the spare bedroom, I kept my own room, and we agreed on splitting bills and food until he had a way to get his own place. Well, not ideal, but okay. <laughs> Before the breakup, however, Weabeard had expressed to me that he wanted to try out a, a, a couple more fantasies of his. Uh, ew. I was extremely hesitant because of the last fantasy that he wanted to try out. This time, however, there involved adding another person into the mix. To paraphrase, he wanted me to get intimate with someone else while he watched from like a corner or inside of a closet. <laughs> Uh, no! I think OP's been pretty clear about this. <laughs> I know this isn't exactly an uncommon interest, but it was definitely not something that I was into. I'm monogamous, 100%, so obviously I refused. The second fantasy was that he wanted me to pretend that I was asleep while he uh, had his way with with my body. Uh, this freaking redacted wanted me to just lay there and not move and just let him do whatever he wanted. Suddenly, some of the odd things that he had been doing started to make a whole lot of sense to me in this moment. While we had been together, we appeared to have taken up the habit of taking photos of me while I was passed out in bed. Just photos of me sleeping. I thought it was weird, and I did ask him to stop and delete the pictures, but he would always defend himself, saying, He just looks so innocent when you're asleep. That doesn't make anything better, dude. <laughs> uh, my spine is in orbit. Weabeard had also at this same time purchased many different kinds of sleep aids, claiming that I've been having trouble sleeping lately, so I just wanted to try these out. I never actually saw him take any of them. I hope you know where I'm going with this. The final straw for me fell into place one day when I woke up to him fondling me in my sleep. This was after we had already broken up, like months after. I had come home from work and fallen asleep on the couch in the living room. I woke up suddenly because I felt something rubbing me there. As I sat up with a start, Weabeard was there, jumping back to his own side of the couch like I had scared the ever-living crap out of him. Oh, uh, I was just checking on you. You don't usually sleep out here on the couch, he said. I knew in my heart of hearts that this was a lie. I know what I felt. God, dude, oh, it's just the worst thing ever. But I had been in that state between dreaming and awake where you can't exactly remember if you dreamt something or if it was actually happening. You know the feeling? Regardless, I scooted as far away from him as I could and just sort of went to my room feeling, I don't know, like, violated. Honestly, I think that's the most perfect description. Honestly, I, I don't think that's just a feeling. I think that is just what happened. It's a verb. Ugh. Anyway, things were falling into place for me, and I wasn't liking the realizations that I was coming to. All of the times I would wake up sore, down there, like chafed, and I would ask Weabeard if he knew anything about it. Hey, you touch yourself in your sleep, like a lot, he told me. I had always found this odd, because nobody I had ever been with had mentioned this to me before. I promptly went out to my local hardware shop and bought a lock for the inside of my door. I was going to start locking myself in my room at night. I then extended an invitation to Isaac. I didn't tell him the extent of everything. I just told him that I felt uncomfortable with Weabeard, and I'd like to buy him a plane ticket for him to come stay with me for a while until Weabeard finally moved out. He agreed, of course. 
Weabeard's temper tantrum upon learning that his least favorite person in the world was about to come stay with us was absolutely magnificent. <laughs> I'll go into more detail on that in the next post, however. As always, thank you for joining me on this journey, and please take care of yourselves. I don't know who out there needs to hear this, but you are beautiful, and you're worth more than you realize. Have a great day. I hate everything that happened in that story up until the last paragraph. It's just Weabeard getting away with more terrible things. But hopefully, karma is going to come down right on the back of his head. Will we get to enjoy some fireworks? I'm not quite sure. I guess we'll have to find out in the last part right now. Weabeard, parting is such sweet release. This will be my last entry for those that are following along, either here on Reddit or over there on YouTube. It's been, I'd say fun, but honestly, I'm just glad that it's over. This post is gonna be the longest one yet. I need to give a shout out once again to Red X. Whoop whoop. Dude, I don't know how you did it, but you did it. I was able to listen to the retelling of all of this and look at it from a different perspective. I was even laughing at some points along the way. They say that laughter is the best medicine and it really truly is. You've given me the gift of being able to look back at some of it and laugh and I can't thank you enough. God, that is so heartwarming, you know? I'm super glad I jumped on this story. Super glad that you decided to be a part of this community. Your writing is impeccable and I'd love another story arc, but we'll get to it when we get to it. You know, when you're ready, <laughs> it'll happen. I'm definitely nowhere near a therapist, but I I'm glad I was able to help, honestly. Also, I feel honored to be a part of the Red X community on Discord. Bam, 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 I plugged it already. <laughs> you're all amazing, supportive, and caring people. The best community I've ever been a part of. I look forward to many more years spending time with all of you and supporting our absolute fearless beast of a leader. I mean, I'm not actually a beast. I'm a human being from a different timeline. That's why I got the gray skin and the no eyes. Never mind. <laughs> Without further ado, I send you all off with the final part of the We A Beard saga. Also, while we're talking out of character or whatever, if you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much. Weabeard's behavior had become insufferable in the month leading up to Isaac's visit. He had reclused to his room almost entirely, stopped bathing, stopped shaving, just stopped making any effort with his appearance at all. And he absolutely reeked. He tried to coerce me into boom boom a couple of times using our shared bills as an excuse. He would say stuff like, well, I covered the entire electricity bill last month. Maybe we could work out some way for you to pay me back for your half. While suggestively looking me up and down. Bro, you a creep. You lucky I don't stab you to death in your sleep. <laughs> there was nothing I wanted to do less than let this sloppy, smelly man-child flop around on top of me. After his offers to be my friend with benefits didn't work, he tried a different tactic, guilt tripping me once again. You're literally the best thing that ever happened to me. We can work things out. Just give me a chance to make things right. He begged. <laughs> I hope you're drinking that in like a fine wine. It's over, you know it's over, it's time to move on. Get the hell out of my house. He had literally gotten down on his knees and had his arms wrapped around my legs, pinning me in place. Stomp the neck, OP, stomp the neck! <laughs> he tried this a few times. I just pried myself out of his grasp and started walking away to my room. You had a chance, it's over, so let it go, I said before locking myself in my room. I like OP in this last half, you know? She got a lot of spunk. She telling this neckbeard how it really is. I really do love to see that. <laughs> I spend most of my time now when I wasn't at work on Discord with Isaac. We'd been getting a lot closer. We did this dumb little thing where I would fall asleep with him on call with the cam going so I could feel safer while I slept. Mushy, I know. In my mind, he was everything that we a beard should have been. All of those features that Weabeard had lied about having to gain my favor, Isaac just naturally had. 
He was tall at six foot three, had green eyes, long, beautiful dark hair, and he was built like a bodyguard. If I had to compare, think of that dude that played Aquaman, except like half Native American and not quite as ripped. He was also straight up with me about the things that he didn't like all that much that I was into. For instance, he's not a fan of Zelda. He just thinks it's boring. And that's okay. By the way, yes, definitely Wind Waker. Excellent choice. Ooh, validation! I mean, it is probably one of the most boring. There's, there's long trips on the water where you're doing nothing. But yes, every Zelda game is a masterpiece. Isaac was not afraid to not have every little thing in common with me. It was refreshing. It was realistic. Comparatively, Weabeard had claimed to have almost everything in common with me. The start of my suspicions at the time were confirmed when I challenged him to a fun little contest. Which of us could climb the topmost tower of Hyrule Castle the fastest, with the starting three hearts, and the starting stamina in Breath of the Wild? He had previously bragged that he had done it himself many times. I had also accomplished this countless times. For those who haven't played Breath of the Wild, first off, shame. Second, this task should be child's play for any person actually invested in the game. But he couldn't do it. Not even once. <laughs> Why you lie about something that's like so provably false? And then like agree to the contest as well because you're trying to save face. <laughs> Uh, what an idiot. He got more and more frustrated as I giggled and crap-talked his tactics the whole time. Finally, he blew up at me. Uh, well, if you think you can do better, then you do it! He growled at me. I promptly grabbed the controller, restarted the game, and made it to the top of Hyrule Tower with ease. <laughs> he looked absolutely murderous when I deadpanned to look towards him with a smug grin on my face. A lot of other small things that we had in common also began to crumble. I like black licorice. Guess what? So did we a beard. But strangely, he never took any whenever I would offer him some. I like smoked oysters. Hey, so did we a beard. But he would wrinkle his nose at the smell when I snacked on him. Nobody likes black licorice and smoked oysters. Nobody I ever met in my life likes these things but me. <laughs> Except for we a beard, apparently. You get the idea though, right? He had lied about all of these common interests to win me over, obviously. Allow me to move on and gush about how awesome Isaac is by comparison once again. Man, if Isaac wasn't as gay as the day is long, I'd ship it. <laughs> <laughs> but it is what it is. Guys and girls can be friends too, goddammit. Don't believe the hype. <laughs> there were no lies with Isaac. No grandiose claims to try and impress me. He showed me tasteful pictures of himself right away and jumped on video and voice call shortly after we had met to play games together. In addition, Isaac had finally broken things off with his ex-boyfriend and had moved away from him after one of our late night talks in which I told him he was worth so much more than that. He deserved better. I could treat him better. Our mutual friends, Isaac and I later found out, had been secretly shipping us behind our backs. I had to sit here and ponder the, <laughs> the dynamics of this for a little bit since Isaac had a boyfriend before, but oh, they're both asexual, so... I, I guess shipping them makes sense in a way, but like, I don't know. Can't guys and girls just be friends? Can we try that for a little bit? <laughs> Whatever. Weabeard, on the other hand, was well aware of these shipping attempts going on. Thus, the desperate need to try and get back with me before Isaac came to stay. I'm pretty sure I don't have to spell out the inevitable for you guys. Isaac and I did end up in a relationship before he actually came to visit. We bashfully admitted our mutual feelings to each other after some prodding from friends. I hate using the term soulmates, but uh, yeah, all that mushy crap. I probably should have been able to predict this when y'all are falling asleep on Discord and such. Me and wifey used to do that too. But yeah, I don't think I predicted that. I was a little slow on the uptake there. <laughs> Finally, the long-awaited day had come. Isaac had taken the long, grueling flight all the way from Florida. 
Yes, he's a Florida man, the USA's version of Straya. And you don't piss off an Australian. Everything where they live is trying to kill them, and they will pull your spine out through your throat. Fatality. Much respect for my many Aussie friends that I've made in the virtual community. Seeing Isaac in person was a sight to behold. He towered over me. He had that long, shoulder-length, dark brown hair, a lovely tan complexion. I assume that came from being half Cherokee. The kindest green eyes and the most genuine smile, accented with dimples, and I am a sucker for dimples. Bro, Isaac out here, he's a real lady killer. Everybody look out. <laughs> he also looked like, as I said earlier, a bodyguard. Intimidating, for sure, to anyone who didn't know the actual teddy bear that he was in private with me. I found out later that he had actually spent some time in the security field. It's a living. <laughs> It made me giggle internally when people's eyes kind of sized him up and then they hustled out of his way as he walked towards me. My joy was uncontainable at this point and I practically flung myself into his arms and held on to him. He gave a small oof as I collided with him. I'm short, so yeah, I probably gut checked him without meaning to. <laughs> and he laughed and held me right back. This right here, this felt right. For the first time in my life, I didn't feel unsure or hesitant, guarded or uncomfortable. I just felt warm, happy and warm for the first time in my life being held by a guy. Okay, so I'm sure y'all probably sick of me daydreaming about him by now, so I'll move on to the good stuff. Namely, Isaac completely scaring Weabeard off with his presence alone. Does that mean no fireworks? He just scampers out of the house like a scared little rat. <laughs> I've long since learned to defend myself thanks to the support of Isaac and a lot of therapy. Don't get me wrong, but at this moment in time, I was grateful that Isaac had come to rescue me for lack of a better phrase. He certainly did not disappoint. The first day I brought him home with me, we saw neither hide nor hair of Weabeard. <laughs> he kept himself all but barricaded in his room, only coming out to use the restroom or the microwave before scurrying back inside. God, he is pathetic, isn't he? Uh, but you can't take mercy on him. He had no mercy on OP. Eventually, I came home to see that Weabeard had bought a mini fridge and a small microwave of his own to keep in his room so he could avoid coming out as much as possible. He absolutely refused to be in the same room with Isaac or even look him in the eye if they did happen to encounter each other in passing. I still have a good laugh to this day about a particular incident. Weabeard had cornered me in the kitchen one day as I was cooking, just making conversation about a certain game that he was playing at the moment. Unbeknownst to him, Isaac had come out of the room and walked up to stand right behind Weabeard, listening in. <laughs> He has this uncanny ability to, despite being a mountain of a man, be so light on his feet that you can't hear him walking. Yeah, that's why I scare my wife all the time. I really don't think I'm that scary. I think she's just jumpy. Anyway, I don't know how he does it. <laughs> he has startled me several times on accident. You're just jumpy too. <laughs> anyway, Isaac decided to chime in on the subject that Weabeard was talking about with his own opinion, and Weabeard let out this kind of strangled squeak. <clears throat> he slowly turned around and nervously laughed and nodded as Isaac continued, slowly just backing away with each, Yep. Oh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Cool. Until he had successfully backed his way into his room, closing the door. <laughs> Uh, in a typical no-crap-given Floridian fashion, Isaac said loudly towards Weabeard's retreating form, What a weird freaking dude. <laughs> the audibly choked out, Oh, that came from Weabeard's room in response, has me cracking up to this day. <laughs> uh, uh, like, you already know you're a weird dude, right? But then to have somebody just call you out on it point blank, you love it. Feels good, man. Isaac had tried saying a friendly hello each time he saw Weabeard, however. 
As previously stated, I had not gone into detail about the true reasons why I wanted him to stay with me at this point. All he knew at this time was that I felt uncomfortable with Weabeard because he was my ex and I wanted moral support. My reasoning for this, I'm ashamed to admit, was not for Weabeard's protection, but because I was afraid that Isaac would pummel the absolute crap out of him and get hauled off to jail. I know some of you will have the opinion that I should have just let Isaac pummel Weabeard for all the things that he had done. This is part of the reason that I shared what I went through with you in the past. I don't like violence. Any kind of violence or yelling or throwing stuff will trigger a panic attack for me, unless it's like in a movie or something. If the movie scene has anything to do with abuse or someone being sliced up, however, yeah, total panic attack. I mean, the secret here is let Isaac beat Weabeard up and then you both say that Weabeard threw the first punch. I would say to actually, you know, goad Weabeard into throwing the first punch if you're able, but he's such a coward, bro. <laughs> it's never gonna happen. Weabeard had it in his head for some reason that he could just wait Isaac out. That Isaac would eventually have to go back home and then he could try to weasel back into a relationship with me. No doubt. We found this out because despite not interacting with Isaac in person, he was still messaging him on Discord. <laughs> what? Uh, that is insanity. Uh, are you kidding? We appeared and typed out this long message to Isaac a week later, just dripping with fake sincerity. I honestly can't remember the exact message itself, but it was something like, Hey man, sorry I've been so distant. I guess I'm just not over the whole breakup thing yet. <laughs> OP does seem genuinely happy with you though, so no hard feelings, I hope. I kind of feel responsible for you two getting together after all. <laughs> I pushed her into your arms with the way I was acting, but that's not your fault or hers. Next time you come back to visit, I'll try to be more social and even play some games with you like we used to. <laughs> I see you as a better friend than even my best friend, Krusty Beard. <laughs> so I'd really like some time to hang out with you in the future when you come back. Isaac stared at the message, dumbfounded, before showing it to me. I guess I should go break the happy news to him, I said. I went out and knocked on Weabeard's door, which he opened a sliver of a crack looking out at me before opening it completely and letting me in. Into the nest. <laughs> His room was disgusting. I think at this point you could probably imagine what the inside of it looked like, so I'll spare you all the gross details. Oh, come on, OP, I love the gross details. <laughs> How am I supposed to get my spine back into orbit? As soon as I stepped in, I was hit with the smell of body odor and farts. Ah, <laughs> uh, you didn't spare all the details. I appreciate you. And there was also, I honestly can't tell what else it was, but it stank. Hey, what's up? Weabeard asked, putting on a depressed demeanor and sighing. Well, uh, I came to talk to you about the message that you just sent to Isaac. I responded quietly. Looking around the room at all the piles of crap everywhere, I knew it would take hours to clean this room if I ever wanted my deposit back in the future. I noticed freaking boogers wiped on one of the walls <laughs> and a peculiar crusty yellow stain on the carpet near his desk. Oh uh, God, <laughs> uh, there it is, that's what I need. <laughs> I swallowed the bile that came up my throat and continued, you know that Isaac isn't leaving, right? I asked, finally able to speak. Weabeard shot up from his chair at this, almost knocking it over in the process, and stared at me. Uh, what do you mean he isn't leaving? Weabeard demanded. I widened my eyes at his sudden outburst and stepped back away from him towards the doorway. I mean, he's not leaving. As in, he now lives here? He's my boyfriend, and I can have him stay here if I want. It's my apartment, I shot back firmly. Weabeard had taken a few more steps towards me, looking like he was going to make a grab for me or something. 
Well, I pay half the rent here. Shouldn't I have a say if he moves in? Nah, bro, you're third wheeling right now. You're cramping my style. Pack up, get out. <laughs> Isaac had heard the commotion from our bedroom and had stepped out into the hall at this moment, showing up in the doorway and causing both Weabeard and myself to jump slightly as he said, What's going on? While staring the most soul-shattering glare into Weabeard that I had ever seen. Weabeard just mumbled something under his breath, to which Isaac promptly said, what was that? Huh? Isaac was starting to look like he was ready to throw down, and I began to push and tug at him to get him to come back into the room with me. Isaac, let's just go, please, I coaxed. He reluctantly allowed me to pull him away from the doorway, which Weabeard rushed over and closed. And as we sat on the couch in my room with me in some kind of daze, Sorry, Isaac said. I was afraid you were going to, like, try and hit him or something, I admitted. I didn't like the way he was talking to you, Isaac shrugged. Oh, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. Things had become tense in the apartment after this incident. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we appeared stuck to his room. We stayed in mine. No more Discord messages or we appeared trying to sneak in alone time with me. Thank God. We appeared had found a new favorite hobby, though banging on our shared wall anytime he thought we were making too much noise. Laughing at a YouTube video, bang, bang, bang. Playing some music, bang, bang. Trying to play a video game, bang, bang, bang. It got to the point where I actually texted him, hey, can you stop? And I never got a response from that. <laughs> uh, he's such a coward, bro. I guess all predators are, you know? I really do want to know how this all comes to a head. This is so ridiculous. The absolute worst part of all of it was that we had tried to be intimate one time, being as quiet as possible, with the TV going in the background, and let me stress to you that this apartment was built a long time ago. These walls are not thin walls. I can barely hear what Isaac is saying to this day if he's in the living room, and I'm in the bedroom right down the hall, even with the doors wide open. And it's not like we wanted that little creep to hear us. Who the hell wants to be overheard doing that? But the second we started, my mattress just happened to make a squeaking noise, and we paused. <laughs> uh, we looked at each other with wide eyes, and sure enough, we heard we a beard bang, bang, bang on the wall. <laughs> uh, uh, it's totally sitcom level. I love it. At a certain point, you just gotta give up the goose and like, you know, bang really loud to make him super uncomfortable. That's the next card that I play, okay? <laughs> Isaac and I wanted to test something out one day. We felt like there was no way in hell that Weabeard could have heard us the night before, and we wanted to get to the bottom of it. We snuck into Weabeard's room while he was gone at work, and I had Isaac stay in our room. No background noise at all, doors closed, and I told him to just say a phrase as loud as he could over and over to see if I could hear him. I could not. At least not until I literally pressed my head against the wall. Weabeard had been putting his ear to our shared wall and listening for us to do basically anything. I confronted him about this and of course he denied it Deflection game strong. I'm not doing that. It's just really easy to hear what's going on through the wall, he argued. No, Weabeard, with TVs going and games and such and your headphones supposedly on, it is literally impossible. Don't lie to me. You're being a creep, I fired at him, leaving his room and slamming the door behind me. You can lie to your roommate, you can lie to yourself, but you can't lie to Jesus. <laughs> Isaac and I waited, needless to say, until Weabeard was at work, and we had the apartment to ourselves to try again, which we did. Loudly. <laughs> because without Weabeard there to stop us, we didn't want to hold back. After we finished, I wrapped a robe around myself and giggled at Isaac, who was shouting some flirtatious things to me from the room, as I went down the hall to get us some water. To my absolute shock and horror, I found Weabeard, sitting on the couch in the living room, staring at the floor. Yes! 
<laughs> oh, it's so perfect. I couldn't have picked a better path myself. He had heard everything. <laughs> he had come home from work early, heard us going at it, and then just sat down on the couch and listened in. Why are you here? I sputtered, clenching the robe tighter around myself. You never come home from work early. What are you doing here? Weabeard just dramatically looked up at me with sorrowful eyes <laughs> and turned away from me, making a dash to the front door and flinging it open, leaving the apartment and slamming the door. <laughs> Uh, he was waiting for them to finish so he could do his big dramatic exit. <laughs> huh? Uh, oh, it's so funny. I rushed back into the bedroom and rambled to Isaac. He, he, he was out there. He heard us. Oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. Oh my God. He freaking heard all of it. Why was he just sitting there? Isaac looked shocked at first. But he quickly recovered and started laughing, which in turn got me laughing as well, though it was more nervous laughter on my part. My laughter turned to outright disgust and anger a while later, and I feverishly sent a text to Weabeard. Weabeard, you should have just left when you heard that going on. I'm really creeped out that you just sat out there and listened in on us. Then you waited for me to catch you sitting out there so you could guilt trip me or something? Oh my god, I'm so beyond over your crap. Consider this your 30 day notice. Get the hell out! I hit the send button and I took a deep breath. He was out in less than two weeks. Isaac and I woke up one day to the sound of banging around going on in the living room and not the good kind. <laughs> and I walked out to find Weabeard's dad and mom hauling all of his stuff out of the apartment and into a U-Haul. His mother gave me dirty looks the whole time. I had hurt her sweet, precious, innocent little baby boy that never did anything wrong with his life, and OP is the devil! Okay, good riddance. They couldn't get all of the stuff that he had accumulated in just one day, so they took all the big stuff first and promised to return the following afternoon to pack up the rest. I agreed to this arrangement, and let Weabeard hang on to his copy of the apartment key. For now. Nuh-uh, don't let him hang on to the apartment key. He's gonna come back in the middle of the night and shotgun both of you <laughs> while you sleep in bed, okay? You knock on the door, I'll open it. You get your crap and I never see you again, okay? That's how we're doing this. After he had left, I ventured to get on to the virtual community to let all my friends on there know that I was finally free that Isaac had agreed to stay with me permanently, and that I was finally able to just breathe. The horror was over. At long last, it was done. So I sat there, cheerfully chatting with my friends, when into my chat room popped a girl I didn't recognize. I welcomed her to the room and continued on with my conversation, just going into details about what Isaac and I planned to do with all of that freed up space in the apartment, when all of a sudden, a wall of text appeared in the public chat. The girl who had entered early had been typing the whole time, posted her spiel, then promptly left, blocking me as she did so. I still have the screenshot of this message somewhere in Discord, but to make it short, it basically said, Mute, I've been wanting to say this all to you for months. You're a total biznatch. You used Weabeard to pay your bills for you, and you abused him. All while he tried to sheepishly stick up for himself. You left him for another guy, and you shoved your new relationship in his face. You're a disgusting human being, and you're a disgrace to abused women everywhere. She ended her message with, Toodaloo! See you next Tuesday, scum! Before she left. Please don't have any ill will toward this girl. I certainly don't. I see her as yet another victim of Weabeard's manipulation and lies. Bro, you actually think that was a third party? I'm pretty sure that was Weabeard or his mom. Like 99% chance. <laughs> Obviously, Weabeard had been going online to his Discord friends who hadn't been around personally to see all the crap he was pulling or the way in which he treated me. 
and he was talking mountains of trash about me the whole time, all while pretending to be friendly to my face. Such a coward, dude. <laughs> <laughs> These people had no way of judging whether or not what Weabeard was telling them was true. None of them had ever met me before. He was even going as far as to tell them that I had maltreated him verbally and physically, that I used him for money and dumped him for some absolute stranger. If someone I was friends with told me that their ex had been doing all that, I also would want to go out on the warpath. I understand that to them I looked like a complete monster. I was still obviously pissed regardless, but at this point, I really didn't care. Let him throw his little fit. Let him lie and manipulate and drag my name through the mud. At least he's someone else's problem now. Plus, I had some sweet revenge up my sleeve anyways. Oh, we do get bigger fireworks. You saved the best for last. <laughs> we Beard's mother was a devout Catholic. The type of Catholic that believes contraception is a sin and so is self-pleasure. It just so happened that the afternoon Weabeard returned to grab the last of his stuff, his mother was going to be the one to come up and help him out. So what did I do? I left his flashlight with an E instead of an A, opened and on full display right in the middle of his boxes. <laughs> Not to make it even worse, but I bet it smells putrid. <laughs> and I also made sure to leave all of his other nasty paraphernalia right up front, in plain view for his dear mommy to find. I then stopped him at the door and let his mother go in first, demanding my key back from Weabeard before I let him go inside. She didn't blow up on him in my apartment, but oh. The beautiful symphony of screeching once they were outside. <laughs> I think she had ripped into him for a full 20 minutes before I heard the car doors slamming and them finally taking off, taking Weabeard far the hell away from me and out of my life for good. I then turned and handed Isaac the spare apartment key, grinning ear to ear. Isaac and I are still together to this day, happily married and living our best lives. Oh, and you get a happy ending too! He has taught me to be more assertive, more confident, and a lot more outgoing than I ever was before. He supported me through every fear, every tear, every dream that I've had, and he really is my rock. I dare say he is my soulmate. I do believe in soulmates, yes. You guys saved each other, 100%. I've done a lot of growing emotionally over these past years, and so I'll leave you all with my personal quote that I've repeated to myself to get me through. Nobody's gonna put up a fight for me but myself, and I'm not going down without one. I hope my story and these words can reach someone out there. If at least one person learns from the mistakes that I've made, I can rest easier at night. Thanks, everyone. Please take care of yourselves. Mute. Gosh, I really did think that the infamous box was going to make a reappearance. Leave that one out for his mother to find. The most damning evidence of all. But no, she probably still denies. She's like, that's my sweet baby boy. He'll never learn to take accountability. Let's just hope that he uh, ends up alone for a very long time. The dating pool. We don't need you, Weabeard. You have been officially retired. And I do hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I hope you like, comment, and or subscribe. You know, follow me on all the things. I'd appreciate that a lot. Thanks to my Patreon patrons and my YouTube channel members as well. Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, you definitely, definitely deserve it. And I shall see you in the next one. So until then, bye-bye. Oh my god, actually, that is a lot of blood.